Okay, uh, so decision trees can be very powerful and also can be highly accurate on the training set. As long as, say for example, you can ask an uh, unlimited number of questions, um, you will finally reach the right answer. So for example, if you guess a person's name, so if you can ask all the person's name on the earth, and um, you can finally reach the right person's name. Okay, so decision trees can be easily um, over, to overfit your training data. However, does not general, uh, generalize well to those unseen data. Um, so one way, there are several ways that we need to control the complexity of the trees. So the first one is that we can limit the number of depths of the tree model. So for example, that here we are asking one, two question, um, and also three, and also, and also four, and also five questions, okay? Uh, so here we are asking five questions, and you can limit the number of depths or the number of questions. So for example, instead of asking five, so how about just just ask three questions? So in, by asking fewer questions, the accuracy will drop, um, but it will also be less overfit. Also, we can also limit the number of leaves, also number of nodes in this scenario. So, if I sum up here, um, we are asking the question, the answer is true or false, so yes or no. Okay, so actually there, there are two nodes. That is already the minimal number that we can have. Uh, if you want to be more complicated, uh, you can ask questions that, for example, uh, for the price, you can say, okay, is that below 10,000? Or is that between 10,000 and also 2,000? Or is that, okay, so like question like this, so that uh, how many leaves you can have at each step or how many nodes? Okay, so that will be a more complicated uh, questions so that you can limit the number of leaves or, uh, or the possible answers, sorry. You can limit the possible answers for each single question. And also more. So for example, you can choose uh, how do you evaluate the quality of the questions? Like, uh, do you want based on the information gain or do you want based on the Gini purity, impurity, etc. Okay, so there are, there are more parameters that you can um, change to control the complexity of the trees. So the decision tree can be highly um, overfit. Um, so that's why we have this random forest. So random forest is a, is a very famous uh, star model that uh, has uh, been widely used. So the basic idea of the random forest is that we know that a single decision tree can overfit. So instead of using a single decision tree, we built the multiple decision trees. And for each single decision tree model, so they kind overfit the data in different ways. Okay, and we say that's fine. But finally, we can aggregate the result of all the tree models to reduce the amount of overfitting. So for example, we can average the result. Okay, so we have multiple decision trees and we can average that result and that result is a result of this random forest. So by doing that, we can reduce overfit and also we can retain the predictive power. Okay, so that is a basic idea of the random forest. So for example, here we built four decision or five decision tree models, and we can see each tree model generates slightly different result. Okay, and in the output, in the final output of the random forest we choose the average result of all the five tree models so that the final output will be less overfit, um, less overfitting uh, to the training data. However, it also has a decent accuracy in terms of the predictive power. Okay, uh, so that is the random forest. 
Another very powerful uh, tree model is called gradient boosting trees. Okay, gradient boosting trees is also a set of tree models. And however, uh, the model is built in the in a serious man, uh, manner so that we are going to build a set of weak models. Okay, so weak trees. However. Uh, each tree models will correct the mistake of the previous one. Okay, so each weak tree models is going to correct the mistake of the previous ones. Uh, so we can control the maximum depth and also the learning rate. So learning rate that means that how fast or how aggressive do you want to change um, uh, the the mistake of the previous model so that we can control those two parameters to reduce or to increase the model complexity. So for example, we can increase the depth for each single weak tree models and the, the, the final output will be highly accurate on the training set but also overfit on the training set. And also we can have a very uh, faster learning rate and also that will also increase uh, the accuracy of the entire uh, tree models, uh, the tree model. Uh, however, that also overfit your model. Okay, uh, so the difference between the green dimples tree and also random forest is that green dimples tree is that we have a set, a series of tree models. However, each tree model is going to rectify is going to correct the mistakes of the previous ones. And you can see that this will give you very, very high accuracy. Okay. Uh, however, it will, may also be overfit. So you need to be careful about the maximum depth and also learning rate. Otherwise, you know, the gradient, gradient boosting tree model will also overfit your training data easily. Okay, uh, so let's say that for the tree models, all those three models, so the decision trees, random forest, or gradient boosting trees, can be used for classification and for regression. And normally, the, uh, especially the random forest and the gradient boosting trees, will give you the best uh, um, result on the training data against the other uh, machine learning models. However, the tree models do not work well with high dimension data. So for example, if you have, if your data have uh, a lot of columns or a lot of features, so that high dimensional data and also sparse data. So sparse data means that uh, if you have a lot of zeros, okay, on those columns. Uh, one example of the high dimension and sparse data is text data. So uh, remember that when we, um, vectorize the text data. So we calculate TFID scores. So the text data is highly sparse and of high dimension. Uh, all the tree models tend to overfit the training data. Okay. Uh, so if the overfit is a problem, so you may consider using random forest or you may consider reduce the number of depths, etc. Again, random forest and also gradient both trees are too widely used and are the most powerful machine learning models nowadays. Okay, so random forest overcome overfitting problems um, that provide a more intuitive decision boundary. Okay, so if you visualize the result of random forest, so uh, the boundary will be smoother. Uh, gradient both trees uh, require careful tuning of the parameters like the number of depths and also learning uh, and also learning rate and also it may highly overfit your training models. Uh, so one famous uh, Python package is XGBoost. So also Skylearn, so the machine the Python library that we mentioned earlier, provide uh, for random forest, gradient boost trees and of the decision trees. However, the XGBoost is also is the one that is very popular that can provide parallel okay, tree boosting solutions that in Python. 